A couple months ago, I promised a brand new tutorial on getting Pi-hole up and running as the ultimate do-it-yourself DNS server. And this is finally that video. Today, I'm gonna walk through installing Pi-hole, getting it set up as a recursive DNS server, and eliminating the need to forward your DNS requests to third parties like Google, OpenDNS, or your internet service provider. Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. Today's video is all about setting up Pi-hole as your own personal and private DNS server that you can host yourself. First up, let's talk about what Pi-hole actually is. It's a DNS server that you can host yourself that blocks ads when you attempt to visit web pages. So for example, if I visit the webpage hackaday.com, you can see there are ads at the top and side of the web page. But if we visit it through a Pi-hole DNS connection, those ads disappear. In its standard configuration, Pi-hole is what's known as a forwarding DNS server, in that it only has a very specific list of websites that it has the IP address for resolution. And if it doesn't have that address, it will forward you on to the next DNS provider that you've configured. So if you type in the website hackaday.com into your web browser, that request is forwarded onto Pi-hole. Since Pi-hole doesn't know where hackaday.com is, since it's not an ad-serving website, it will forward that request onto the next DNS server that you've configured. That DNS server will then forward back down the IP address for Hackaday through Pi-hole and into your PC. However, while Hackaday is loading, it also wants to load up a whole bunch of websites that contain ads. When those requests go to Pi-hole, it is in the ad block list, and so they are filtered out. Everybody got that? Good, because I'm not saying it again. <laughs> So by default, Pi-hole runs great for its advertised features. However, there is a lot more power under the hood with a little bit of tweaking, and that's what we're going to do today. We're gonna to set up Pi-hole as what's called a recursive DNS server. That is essentially what you forward on your request from Pi-hole to, such as Google and OpenDNS. When you ask Pi-hole where is hackaday.com, if it doesn't know the answer, it will actually seek out what's called the authoritative domain server of hackaday.com and get the answer from them directly. On the very first request of a website, this will take a little bit longer than usual. However, Pi-hole will also cache that information for future use. So the next time you visit the website, it loads much, much faster. What's more, rather than sending all of your DNS requests to a third party, you're gonna be getting your information directly from the IP server itself and cutting out the middleman entirely. So not only will the third party DNS servers no longer be able to compile a complete list of your internet browsing history based off the websites that you visit, you're also gonna be safer from DNS spoofing, such as serving up a fake website when you try to visit your bank. So with all the introductions out of the way, let's go ahead and get to building our Pi-hole server. First up, I'm gonna create a new virtual machine inside of Proxmox. However, you can run this on a Raspberry Pi or on your own hypervisor of your choice. I'm gonna to go to create new virtual machine. I'm gonna number it number 410. I'm gonna name it homelab-pihole-ftl. Go ahead and click on next. Under OS, we're gonna select the Ubuntu 20.04 live server ISO. Now again, Ubuntu 20.04 server is my Linux distro of choice. This isn't the time for that argument. So use what you like, I'll use what I like. The commands are the same. Click on next. Under hard drive, I'm gonna go ahead and give this thing 40 gigabytes. No real reason for that. I just have lots of space on the server. And I'm gonna select my local server for storage. Click on next. Under CPU, I'm gonna give this four CPU cores, which is again, way more than enough, but I have lots of headroom. Click on next. I'm gonna give this four gigabytes of RAM. Click on next. I'm gonna leave network settings at default. Click on next and then click on finish. Once that's been created, I'm gonna open up the console and we'll go ahead and get Ubuntu installed. For the installation, we're gonna leave pretty much everything at the default. So English as our main language, we're not gonna read the release notes. We're gonna verify that we have a US language keyboard. I'm gonna leave this at DHCP for right now. We're gonna give our server a name. So homelab-pihole-ftl, pick a username. I usually go with administrator on a lot of my servers. Give it a password. And we are gonna install OpenSSH server because that will make the installation easier later on. So go ahead and check that box and click on done. Click on done again. And now we just wait for the installation to complete. Once Ubuntu is back up and running, we're gonna go ahead and log in it with the credentials you set up during installation. And the only thing we need to do here is find out the IP address so we can SSH into the box. So I'm gonna type in IP space address. And listed right here is my IP address. So 192.168.1.99. And that's all I need. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this session. 
Now that we have the IP address, go ahead and log into the server over SSH with the SSH terminal of your choosing. In this case, I am using PuTTY, but again, you can use whatever you'd like. This isn't the place for that argument. If I could type today, that would really help things out. First things first, we're gonna install PyHole exactly as we usually would. And there's a handy little script right here that you can get off either the GitHub or PyHole websites. So I'm just gonna copy that. I'm gonna type in sudo, paste in that script, and then hit enter. And PyHole will automatically install itself. And while we're waiting on this to happen, it's a good time to introduce today's video sponsor, Linode. A lot of my audience watches for the home lab content like you all are doing right now but not everyone has the finances or wants to dedicate an entire room to setting up their own home lab. I mean, just think about what I've gone through here. I added two 20 amp circuits to my house, plus an air conditioner dedicated for my rack. Not everyone wants the noise of a full data center in their garage. Rather than hosting your own personal cloud, let Linode host it for you. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. And that includes the software in today's video tutorial. You can set up your own ad blocking recursive DNS server or set up your own personal VPN tunnel so you can browse the web securely wherever you're at from any device. Linode makes it easy to deploy and manage your own cloud services with solutions starting from a single shared CPU to massive multi-core virtual machines. With shared CPU plans that start at as little as $5 per month and scaling up to as high as you need to go, you'll be able to find a hosting plan that fits your needs. Install your favorite server apps and services from scratch or start with one of the many pre-configured one-click installs from the Linode app marketplace. Even if you do host your own servers, you can use Linode to keep a backup of your systems offsite. Visit linode.com slash craft computing and receive a $100 60 day credit when starting a new account and get your home lab up and running today. That's linode.com slash craft computing. And now back to the PyHole installer. We're pretty much gonna use nothing but the default settings in the installer itself. So it lets us know that it will transform our device into a network wide ad blocker, but we're gonna do just a little bit more than that. So go ahead and click on okay. First thing it'll ask you is to set up an upstream DNS server. This is so the DNS forwarder inside of PyHole can work. Now, for right now, we're just going to select Google. However, later on, we will be removing that entry and letting PyHole get its own DNS. By default right now, PyHole comes with the Steven Block ad block list, and that's pretty much all you need to move forward. So go ahead and click on OK. We're gonna block ads over IPv4 and over IPv6. So again, go ahead and click on OK. And then it's gonna ask if you wanna convert your DHCP address into a static address. I'm gonna go ahead and click on yes because this is only gonna be a temporary solution for me. You can also click on no and assign it a new DHCP address or set it whatever static address you want. Do you wish to install the web admin interface? Of course I do, yes. Do you want to install the web server and require PHP modules? Of course, also yes. Do you want to log queries? Now, this will keep a comprehensive list of all of your DNS requests. However, that kind of spits in the face of the privacy aspect of it. For my use case, I'm gonna go ahead and select yes because I don't care if my DNS queries are logged on my own server. But if that's a concern of yours, click no. If you selected that you wanna keep logs, there are four different modes. The default is show everything, which keeps a record of a client and what website they tried to access. There's hide domains, there's hide clients and domains, and then there's anonymous mode. Again, for my use case, I'm going to show everything. And after about 60 seconds or so, PyHole should be completely installed and we can bring it up inside of a web browser. And installation is now complete. Now, the one thing you need to take note of is how do you actually access the web interface? So for most people, it's gonna be the IP address forward slash admin. There's also a password right here that you need to take note of, or you can reset the password from the SSH session you're in right now. If you do want to set up a custom password for the PyHole web interface, the command is pyhole-a-p and then whatever your password will be. So I'm going to type in password one. I know, nice and secure. Once the password has been set, it's a good idea to try to log into the web interface to make sure it's correct. So I'm going to go to 192.168.1.99 forward slash admin. If PyHole is up and running correctly, you should see this interface right here. I'm going to go down to the login tab and then I'm gonna enter the password that I set inside the terminal, so password one. If that's successful, you'll have a bunch more options here on the left-hand side, and you know you have admin access. And now for the secret sauce that transforms this standard ad blocking installation of PyHole into a full recursive DNS server. And for that, we're gonna install Unbound. Now, down in the video description, I will have a link to the full written tutorial over on the PyHole website. I do recommend definitely clicking on that as you're gonna to wanna to get in on that copy pasta action. So first up, we're gonna go ahead and update our apt repository. So sudo apt update. 
Once that's done, we're gonna install Unbound. So sudo apt install Unbound. And yes, I would like to continue. Once Unbound has been installed, the fun part starts. We actually need to write our own configuration for Unbound to actually work. Lucky for us, there is an example configuration file on the PyHole website. So again, you're gonna wanna go down there and copy that. But for right now, let's go ahead and create that configuration file first. So I'm gonna go up to this directory right here and copy that from the PyHole website. I'm gonna do sudo nano and then paste that directory in. That will create that configuration file for us. And next I'm going to copy this configuration file right here. So copy that and then paste it in. With all of that pasted in there, I'm gonna hit Control X to exit, I'm gonna hit Y to save, and I'm gonna hit Enter to confirm the file name. Now, part of that configuration file was actually to change the DNS port inside of Unbound from 53 to 5335. Now, why would we do something like that when all of the clients on your network are expecting port 53? Well, Pi-hole is already listening on port 53, and you can't listen on the same port with two different services. So the way your network will be set up now is Pi-hole will be your DNS server that all of your clients communicate with. And since it's on port 53, there's no configuration change you need to make on the clients. Pi-hole will then forward those requests to Unbound via port 5335 as a standard DNS request on a secondary port. From there, Unbound goes out to the internet and finds the authoritative domain server you were looking for, forwards that request back to Pi-hole, Pi-hole strips out all of the advertiser IP addresses out, and feeds you, the end client, a clean IP address. So we're gonna go back to our Pi-hole main page here. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna click on the DNS tab up at the top. I'm going to uncheck the two Google DNS servers that we set up during the installation process and scroll down to upstream DNS servers. I'm gonna check the box on custom one IPv4 and type in 127.0.0.1 pound 5335. Sorry, hashtag I'm old. Once that is done, go ahead and scroll all the way to the bottom of the page and click on save. And with that, your Pi-hole server should now be up and running as a full recursive DNS server. With everything set up and ready to go, let's go ahead and test Pi-hole both as an ad blocker and as a recursive DNS server. So as you can see on the left side, I have my Pi-hole logging and on the right hand side, I have MSN, one of the most notorious ad heavy websites in existence. Like why would anyone come here? This is an ad at the top, this is an ad in the middle, this is an ad right here mixed in with some news headlines, but most of them sponsored. Over here is topics for you, which are all ads. Honestly, it's just terrible. So let's see if we can fix it just a little bit. I'm gonna bring up my network interfaces. We're gonna open up my ethernet connection. I'm gonna go down to properties. I'm gonna go to IPv4 connections. And then down at the bottom, I'm gonna say use the following DNS server address. And I'm gonna type in the IP address of my Pi-hole server. So 192.168.1.99. Hit okay and close. We're gonna open up a new tab and I'm gonna to go to msn.com again. Now this website is not a great example, again, because Microsoft likes to host a lot of their own ads. But as you can see, a good number of them have gone away. It's no longer asking me to switch to Edge Chromium from Firefox in a banner up at the top. There's no ads right here in the center, although the logo for ad choice is still right there. And this big, large video player is now also gone. Now let's see what happened inside of Pi-hole. Down here at the bottom of our log history, you can see a bunch of requests that say forwarded on to localhost 5335. That is Pi-hole responding saying, I don't know what the DNS is asking for. I'm gonna forward this on to Unbound so Unbound can find the actual domain root. As we scroll up a little bit, you see a bunch of results that are starting to say, okay, cached. Those are websites that Pi-hole has actually cached the data of so it knows the IP address directly and can serve that query directly to the client. Rather than forwarding that query off to Unbound and having Unbound find the domain root off on the internet, Pi-hole can respond to that request directly, which is exactly what a recursive DNS server does. You can also see a bunch of requests that are being blocked and that is Pi-hole saying, that is part of my ad repository, you're not allowed in. So there you go, an ad blocking and recursive DNS server all in one very tidy package. But for home labbers, there's one more very important feature that I'd like to draw your attention to. And that's that Pi-hole can now respond to local DNS queries. Now Pi-hole could kind of always do this and I've used it for this purpose before, but before you had to go into the Pi-hole hosts file and manually add in the IP address of any local DNS queries you wanted to respond to. Now there's actually a dedicated tab just for local DNS. So if I go down here to the local DNS tab and DNS records, I can create DNS records based off internal services that I run in my server stack. That is pretty cool. 
With that, I think you have everything you need to get up and running with Pi-hole as a recursive DNS server, ad blocker, and even a local DNS authority. If you have any questions or comments about this video, go ahead and leave them down below and I will do my best to respond. On your way down there, make sure to drop this video a like and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. Follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing to keep up with my daily shenanigans. And if you like the content you see on this channel and want to help support me in what I do, consider joining the Patreon or Float Plane. Links are also down in the video description. As a bonus, you'll get exclusive access to the Discord server, where you can chat with myself and join the ever-growing community over there. And it gets you an opportunity to pick my brain without blasting me with Twitter DMs. That's going to do it for me in this one. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers, guys. Today's beer is from Freigeist Beer Culture, and it is the Aufschneider Hoppy German Style Hefeweizen Ale, 6.0%. They are out of St. Louis, Missouri, and appear to possibly be a gypsy brewer. As it says on the side, brewed and canned by Urban Chestnut Brewing Company, St. Louis, Missouri, for Freigeist. So, uh, using someone else's facility to brew your own beer. It's got kind of an interesting smell to it. Um, let me see if there's any hint about what hops they're using. Freigeist was founded in 2009 with a mission to revive Germany's lost artisanal ales. We now offer bold American-influenced American brewed twists on our homeland's most popular beer styles. Generous additions of Cascade and Mosaic hops gives this German-style Hefeweizen ale its tropical fruity notes and extra burst of American-style bitterness. Okay, so Cascade and Mosaic hops. Um, I thought I smelled Mosaic, but uh, those Cascades were kind of throwing me for a loop. That is definitely an interesting beer. I think I like it but I'm not quite sure yet. This reminds me kind of like doing a shandy though with uh, like grapefruit soda and a lager, but it's an IPA and a Hefeweizen. Like it's definitely tropical, but it's much more of like a melon kind of tropical. It's not citrusy. Uh, it's very interesting. Yeah, your brain tells you IPA and then there's that rich banana kind of like flavor from the German malt that just kind of carries the back of the flavor. But I'm also missing some of those quintessential Hefeweizen spices and, and, and tastes that are usually so predominant in Hef beers. Um, it's a little conflicting. It's, it's weird. <laughs> I'll say this one is interesting. Um, I'm not disappointed in it. It's not a bad beer, but it's not, it's not doing it for me either. Um, if it is being called a Hef, I'd prefer it be a little bit more towards the Hefeweizen and a little bit less Americanized. However, it's not quite Americanized enough for me either, as the hop flavor just really isn't quite there. To be fair, it's a fine drinkable beer. I just don't think this one's for me.